My name is Alana Blockley and I was born in Glasgow and I've lived here all my life. My family is from the fairground community which means every summer in um, the community we have um, machines and kiosks, snack bars and we travel up and down the country and it's for the, 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 the fairground so it's, this, this is our livelihood, this is our business and my family stopped us when I was younger and we've um, continued to have snack bars and kiosks um, for the past 20 years. So I just went to school during the, the winter months and then at the summer I would help my mum and dad in their business and there was no option of having a day lying in bed doing nothing. I was, you know, had to go out and learn the, the, the family business and learn, um, you know, how the way the travelling life was. But as I um, grew older, I wanted to continue my education, so I stuck in at school. I had no religious upbringing when I was a child. It's not really anyway. Well, at school, um, we we had a religious an RE class, a religious class that we had to go to, and we we I don't I don't actually remember learning about other religions. I only remember learning about Christianity, and. Um, we, we spent most of the time watching different like, cartoon videos of the prophets and stuff like that. Um, and that was the, the fun part, watching the, the cartoons. But um, the, only, the only thing I remember is going to church at primary school in a group and um, like seeing the Hail Marys and things like that. But it was nothing really taken seriously. Or it wasn't like we went to Sunday school or I didn't go to the church every Sunday or anything. And um, throughout the, um, the year, it would be Christmas and Easter that we would celebrate out of the fact that everyone else um, around us was you know, eating chocolate or um, buying Christmas presents. But it wasn't really made, um, it wasn't an emphasised thing that it was about God and that um, it was a religious um, holiday. That wasn't really the main focus of it. It was just something that um, we did because it was the social, the social normality. So my opinion of um, Muslims and Islam before I became a Muslim um, was that I just I was heavily influenced by the, the Pakistani community and, and I just saw Islam through them and like the way they dressed and, and the food and everything like that. But I just listened to what the media sort of said that you know the, the typical things that they're they're bad people and they're um, they're, they're terrorists. The men beat the wife, and you know the, the, wife, the, the wives can't work, and they need to stay at home and cook and clean all day. And that's the only sort of perception that I had. Because I never had any Muslim friends, I didn't have a need to, to worry about what I thought anyway. Um, it was just part of our um, our country, and that and that was that I accepted it. But it wasn't until I started to, to meet Muslims and start to question Islam that um, my perceptions of Muslims and about Islam changed as well. And I started to understand that Islam is across the world, and you know there's different different cultures um, and, and the, 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 the different countries, they live Islam in their own way and I understood that the women, you know, they, they have jobs, they study, they, they have families and they still do the, all the things that I, that I do and that they're not actually bad people and, and the men don't all beat their wives, they are, are actually good guys out there as well that are Muslims. Two and a half year ago, I was really fed up, I just finished college and um, I was you know, 18 and a half and I was thinking what, what do I want to do with my life and I was struggling to figure out what type of career I wanted. So I pa packed all my money away and I booked a holiday to um, Fortaventura and I decided that I wanted to go away for the full summer and just have a, a life, you know, a six month period away from family, away from friends and get a job in a bar if I could, um, stay in an apartment with meet someone, meet new people, do whatever I liked, you know, drink, party, anything that I wanted to do, I, I felt, well, this is my time to do it. And I'm young, single, you know, I can do what I like. So that was the plan. And then leading up to the summer, I a few things happened. The ash clouds came and um, ended up with my cat. My cat had an operation, so it took all my savings away. So I couldn't, long story short, I couldn't go to the to the to Spain for six months. I could only go for two weeks. So I went over there for two weeks and when I was over there there was these Muslims that I met and a lot of Moroccans are over there at the moment. And they started to explain to me that um, that they prayed and they didn't they didn't drink and 
um, you know, there was and they did normal things. They liked, you know, um, films and um, going shopping, and and I just never. I thought Muslims just stayed at home and cooked and cleaned, and that and that was all they did. And you know, the men, you know, went to the mosque, and that was it. But um, I was shown this completely different side to what Muslims are, and you know, um, simple things like I went to the shop and I was given back more change than what um, than what I, I gave the woman. And my friend at the time said, you know, what are you doing? Like that's wrong. You need to give the change, the, the money back. You've been given too much change. You know, you need to give that back and be honest. And it didn't occur to me that yeah, that's actually the right thing to do. So just like even small things like courtesy and you know um, having respect and you know um, just just small things that I've not been shown. I don't know if it's maybe it's a cultural thing, but I, I could definitely see over time that it was through religion that you know having patience that things will work out and um, like having having a, a, a trust in God that I, I'd never been shown that before. So that was my first encounter. And what confused me was, if this, if these people, Muslims that I've met are so good, why is the world portraying Muslims as being the worst people in the world? I just didn't understand that. So it was from that moment when I went home and I didn't have a holiday full of drinking uh, wild parties. I went home sober. So um, I spent the next year studying Islam and went to different classes and got different books, not to, with the intention to convert, but just to understand the reasons why, um, you know, why is there good Muslims and why is there bad Muslims? And, and why is the media portraying all Muslims to be bad? And that was the, the thing that I wanted to find out more about. When I, I studied the books and I, and I understood that um, God isn't a, a man sitting on a chair with a white beard and a, and a white robe, you know, it, it's not a person. God, the, you know, when I started to learn all the different attributes of God and like the different, the names of God and all the different, um, like that God isn't a person, you know, that's what I really liked and I, I thought, well, that is what I believe. And um, that just appealed to me more because the, the, the thought that I had beforehand that, that God was, was a person, was a man, and I felt I was being judged by a man wasn't, that didn't sit right with me at all. So I did believe it and I looked at all the different um, different things about Islam, about um, there being one God and books, prophets, you know, um, angels, um, what happens when you die, and all of the different aspects I, I believed and I believed these things before I knew anything about Islam um, but I didn't actually know it was Islam that I was believing in and the, the concept of um, like Jesus being the son of God I, that wasn't really ringing, it wasn't sitting right with me because I thought I felt a bit uncomfortable that, that about Jesus um, about God having son like a son and anything like that so I was a bit hmm I wasn't too sure about that and that's how I didn't have a strong faith beforehand but when I did st study Islam and um, all the different things became clearer to me then I started to think well that's actually what I've believed in my whole life and just didn't know it. So in 2010 I decided to take my Shahada. It was, um, I went to a new to Islam class on a Wednesday and I met loads, met loads of uh, lovely women there and they um, supported me to for a, a few weeks to that they, they would support me to take my shahada and be, be with me at the time. So I went one week and um, with my scarf all wonky, not even around my head properly. <laughs> and um, yeah, I took my shahada and it was really, really nice and um, really welcoming. And I, um, they, they gave me lots of books and um, encouraged me to, to go back every week and, and, and learn, you know, learn Islam through them and that I was just to be patient on my journey and um, to take everything, every, every step slowly and, and uh, it was, a, you know, I remember it like yesterday but um, I was really nervous and um, it was really nice, really welcoming um, day. So after I took my Shahada, it was about a year and a half later that I actually told people. Only my Muslim friends knew that I was a Muslim. So it took me a full year to, to, to cut out alcohol and to start eating halal food. And then I told my parents and I was really nervous for telling them. So just before Ramadan, I knew that if I was going to do it, I would lose, I would lose weight and it would be quite noticeable. 
and my family would, because they live so close to me, they would see that I'm, I'm not eating and they would question what on earth I'm doing. So I came home from work one day and went and spoke to mum and dad and said that there's something that I really needed to tell them. And um, they started to get really nervous because they didn't have a clue what I was going to say. And I told them, um, they, they says to me, are you pregnant, you know, or, or have you crashed your car or something like that? And I says, no, no. I says, what I actually is, is I want to be a Muslim. And um, they, they, was, they, was, they was fine with that, completely fine. And they've adjusted really well. And, um, you know, they've got used to seeing me wearing hijab and, um, like, even calling me a Muslim. So they're completely fine now. Um, and my, my friends have been not too bad, but I think they've just had to adjust with the fact that I don't go out clubbing with them anymore. But um, the, the friends that mean the most to me and the ones that, that truly are friends with me, I've still got and it, it doesn't matter if I'm Muslim or not. So my advice to anyone thinking about converting to Islam is to read up on it a lot and to not listen to the Sheikh Google and, you know, go on and read different books, listen to different people, watch diff different uh, YouTube lectures and um, come to your own conclusions. And then if you do decide to, to come to Islam, you know, take each day at a, a time and don't put too much pressure on yourself and, and know that you are new and it is a gradual um, learning process. So to combat Islamophobia, um, in my opinion, through what I've learned so far, it's that Muslims, whether they're born or revert, should definitely lead um, to show Islam through example and shouldn't be all talk. They need to do it and show it in their actions and, and show um, non-Muslims Islam through the way they live their life. And you know, when bad things happen in the, in the press, they shouldn't jump on it um, like, like they do. Um, because all non-Muslims are looking at Muslims' reactions and, and how they deal with stuff. Um, so I think as long as there's um, Muslims, when they're dealing with non-Muslims, they're open and they're able to talk about their religion and, and make it um, adaptable. Um, that Islam is for every individual, every individual, and you don't have to be an Arab to be a, a Muslim. That you can be a white British female and still be still be a Muslim. You just need to make certain adjustments and live it the way you, you know you can adapt your life to be like that. I didn't think three years ago that I'd be sitting here wearing a scarf, but I am. And I didn't think a year ago that my mum would be stopping smoking and, you know, the past few weeks, alhamdulillah, she has. So you never know, that could be in five years that they stop drinking, you just, you just don't know. But if I wasn't a Muslim and someone came up to me in the street and started, you know, talking about religion, I'd, I'd be like, who, who, who are you to, like, wh what are you all about? But I think it's more about the actions that people have. So, like, we have got into these conversations about God and different things, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm their daughter, so I don't want to question them about certain things because at the end of the day, it's their decision and they can only make that um, decision on their own. So as, as far as I'm concerned, I would rather them, I would rather perf not perfect myself, but, you know, be a, set a good example myself and for them to see maybe, maybe not in a year, but maybe two or three years and say, well, she's actually became a better person, but it's because of Islam that she's like that. But my, my, it certainly opened my mum and dad's perceptions of Islam. And, um, for, you know, we all have, the majority of people have this assumption that Muslims are this and Muslims are that, which is what I believed. But obviously now I'm a Muslim and I don't think like that. Not so long ago it was Islam Awareness Week in Scotland and I was asked to give a talk. And I thought that'd be a really, really good opportunity to bring them to Glasgow Central Mosque. Um, because, it's, you know, we've always drove past it, but it's not something that they would think, oh, we're going to go in and have a tour of the, a tour of the mosque. So I brought them down and I knew they was nervous. I knew they was thinking, oh, it'll be a bunch of terrorists in the back. You know, I knew they were not thinking like that, but thinking that, oh, there's going to be all these scary looking guys with beards and stern faces and not being accepting or not wanting, because my mum doesn't wear a scarf and, you know, and my mum was worried, what should I wear? Should I be covered up? Should I? And my dad's like, do I look okay? And I says, listen, don't worry. Like, you know, they're not, they're not going to, judge you or anything, it's an open day, it's to you know, invite people and let people understand what Islam is, it's for, open for everyone regardless of who you are. So um, when they went, I knew they felt really comfortable and the exhibition that was on was beautiful and it had a lot of history and a lot of um, stuff that my dad knew about Islam and a lot of stuff that he didn't know um, and the, the talks was lovely and I think it really, you know, the, the Muslims that was there, they wasn't 
seen all Islamic terms and seeming really foreign and, and like as if they didn't understand them, they was really, you know, have the Glasgow slang and really approachable. And I think my mum and dad really appreciated that you can be a Muslim and, and still be, you know, fun. You know, you don't have to be a boring person because you're a Muslim and be all, you know, um, like preaching. It's not like that, you know, we're just normal people. So when I started to study about Islam, the things that I focused on was um, stuff that was relating to me, for example, the way women are treated and hijab. And I just learned, you know, the reasons why you wear hijab and, and you know, what hijab consists of and um, uh, the role of the woman in, like, the, in the house and, and how she's to behave towards um, our husband and our friends and what our duty is and, and that was the stuff that I focused on because that was the thing that I was unsure about um, and that I, th I thought was I had a lot of misconceptions about and that was the thing that I wanted to make clear of if I'm going to be a Muslim am I going to be expected to, to do certain things that maybe I don't agree with or, or what so that's what I wanted to focus on and learn about. So when I was looking um, at you know, religion and looking about, you know, following a religion and rather than just believing in God, um, what I noticed was that if you're, if you're a Christian, you know, for me, all that consists of is you celebrating Christmas and Easter and you go to church on a Sunday. There's nothing more to it than that. But when you look at Islam, you know, there's so much that it involves, you know, it affects your whole way of life. So it affects, you know, what you eat, how you dress, how you act, the way you deal with things, um, you know, for praying and everything. So. I knew that I'd been a, if I was a Christian, you, I didn't feel as if I would have any structure in my life, that all you would do is go to church on a Sunday and then that would be it. Whereas if you're a Muslim, you know, you need to pray five times a day. You, you, you know, you're constantly reminded about God in every action that you do. So um, I felt as if that was more of a, a structure to my life and my, and my daily life as well. And that's what appealed to me more, that you, the fact if you follow Islam, you're, you have a set of guidelines and a set of rules laid down in front of you that you're supposed to try and abide by, rather than you just blatantly choosing parts of a religion that you want to do and what you don't want to do. Last Christmas, that was the first Christmas that I had uh, when I converted. So the, the big question was, what are we going to do about Christmas? And I says to them, you know, I, you, you're my only family, I don't have any brothers or sisters, so I'm not going to sit alone on Christmas Day and, and, and just stop the, tra the tradition that we've had the, the, whole, the whole of my life. So we came to the compromise that we would have a halal uh, Christmas dinner. <laughs> so I made the big deal like the month before it to go to the, the halal butchers that we have and order a turkey. So we had everything prepared. My dad wasn't going to, to you know, prepare the food with any alcohol or anything. And um, it was going to be a completely halal dinner. And then when we went over to the butchers the day before, um, the turkey was actually humongous. And my mum and I, we both freaked out because we thought that will never fit in our oven. So we, we couldn't actually get end up getting the turkey. So last minute, I ended up getting a halal um, chicken and they had to go to Tesco and get some food. So it was half half a halal Christmas dinner. <laughs> it was the best attempt that we had. So, um, so I cooked my chicken and then, you know, they cooked theirs and we still had a good time. So inshallah, this Christmas we'll have a completely halal Christmas dinner. <laughs> and then, not so long ago, um, my dad, I think he, he expresses his um, understanding through food in a way. It's a bit weird, but that's what he does. And he, um, they've been buying a lot of halal food now because, um, because I live so close with them. Um, we eat a lot of food, like, my, my dinner's with them quite a lot and it's been a bit of a hassle, it's, oh, you can't eat that and my mum, I go over and I say to her mum, what's in the fridge and she's like, well there's salad and there's, there's ham, oh, you, but you can't eat ham, so, oh, we'll just have a tin of soup. So she's, you know, trying to remember that I don't eat ham and stuff. But my dad went and made me spaghetti bolognese and um, he's like, oh, you need to try it, it's lovely, it's halal, I went and bought halal mints and it's halal this and it's all, and I'm like, okay. And I ate it, it was lovely. And then when I went home, I was sitting, I was thinking, wait a minute. So I phoned him up and I says, Dad, did you put wine in this? And he's like, oh yeah, I forgot that you can't have wine. <laughs> so I was like, well, it wasn't halal then, was it? But you know, it's, these things happen and he did make an effort. So um, that's all I can ask for. So 
So my first encounter with the Quran was when I was given the Quran, it was a small one. Um, but I didn't really look at it too much because I actually couldn't see the, the writing, <laughs> it was that small. But my friend um, Safi and Gemma, they both chipped in and got me a lovely, um, a big massive Quran. And it had the English um, and it, the, the Arabic and the transliteration. So I'd be able to well, attempt to pronounce it. Um, so they bought me that and um, it was really, really nice, a really nice gift to be given from them. So the main reasons that I wanted to become a Muslim was because when I started to understand it and I started to realise that that's actually what I believed in, I felt that there was no need to hide that. You know, you can only live for so long and, and um, not come out to everyone and express that that's what you believe in. So I wanted to be a Muslim because it's, it's actually what I believe is the truth. And also other aspects, for example, wearing hijab, um, I felt as if that's, um, you know, protected me in a way. Um, I don't feel as if I, I need to um, live a lifestyle based on what other people assume and that I can just um, live, live it the way I believe it should be done Islamically and it's pleasing to God. If I was to describe um, Muhammad peace be upon him, the, the one story that I learned, um, I was told by Sheikh Amr, was that, um, I don't know specifics and specific, specific, uh, specific names, but I do remember the story that um, he would walk past this woman's house every day and um, she didn't like him so she kept throwing like garbage or something from a window and every day he would just ignore it and like continue going to wherever he was going and every day it would happen and um, she was shit abuse and whatever. And then one day he went past and she didn't throw the garbage uh, out onto him. So he, he was wondering, he was like, what is, what, what's, why is the woman not, you know, giving me all the abuse? So he went in and he says, um, like, where, where's this woman? What's happened to her? And she was actually, she was sick. And he was, you know, I don't know specifically, but I'm sure that he went over and like he says to her or says to family members or something that, you know, is she okay? You know, I hope she gets better and everything. So that just goes to show that, you know, I really love that story that um, even if someone's, you know, harmful to you or, or doing bad things, you, you know, you don't just treat them like that. They're, maybe they're naive and maybe they don't understand you or don't understand why you're a Muslim or why you do certain things. But if you just be patient and show through your actions that you can be forgiven and that you know, you're, you're a caring person, then, um, then I think that's a good moral to, to live your life by through, through that story. What Islam means to me is, you know, being part of um, a, a community that believes in the same thing and um, feeling at peace and um, feeling comfortable and, and knowing what you actually believe in and knowing that you have a, a set of um, values that you, you want to live your life by and sticking to that. So, so that's that's what I like about it, and I think if everyone, you know, made some changes in their life to to and, and came to Islam, then they would see over in the, lo the long run that it is actually a better way to live, and there's much better, um, you know, you, when you start to not to appreciate the materialistic things in life, and you come away from that, and you know, you start to value um, um, different things, you know, um, like family, for example you know, having good relationships with your family, you start to appreciate the importance of that. And, and that's through Islam that you learn that. So I think even something as simple as that, that that's, you know, a good aspect of Islam. And um, it's a fun way to live and um, more peaceful and happier and um, the best way. <laughs>